Hi everyone, and thank you for returning to this video. In it, we discuss how institutions are betting on positive developments because they believe that there will be short defaults, which will lead to issues like the gamma squeeze. Now let's examine this when the price was at 770 on September 21st and hit precisely $11 on October 12th, more than eight months ago, AMC's rebate cash giving for lending out shares was last this close to these levels. After R, institutions are expecting a bullish surge, and we've discussed the numerous reasons why BMC will see an extremely positive increase. We have discussed a wide range of topics, including the impending positive gains, the CAT Systems implementation, T1, and of course a great deal more. These companies are expressing their belief in AMC's future growth. They believe that one important factor is the growing probability of shorts failing to fulfill their commitments. Over a 22-month period, the graph shows a steady pattern of losses in hedge funds. By the end of the first quarter of 2024, hedge funds had redeemed a total of $25.6 billion. Over the last two years, investors have been steadily taking money out of the asset class. With money leaving the hedge fund industry, something significant is happening that provides insight into the state of the business right now. The first clue that a market collapse is imminent is the flight of capital from hedge funds, an indication that investors are apprehensive about possible market volatility. They are obviously safeguarding their capital because they anticipate turbulence. The more crucial thing to realize is that this implies that hedge funds are losing money, and as net outflows have occurred for 22 straight months, billions of dollars have already left the sector. Hedge funds, such as short sellers, therefore have less money to work with when investors begin to withdraw their capital. This implies that the funds they utilize to purchase further collateral have decreased as well. This indicates that the capital strength of these hedge funds is actually declining, which makes logical given their high level of leverage exposure already. Investors that short assets such as AMC face difficulties if they lack the funds to cover and maintain these bets. Furthermore, Robinhood Wells received a notification from the SEC today, and Robinhood acknowledged that AMC jeopardized around two-thirds of their worth in the Congressional GameSA report. We just discussed the risky practice of hedge funds withdrawing money. This clarifies even more of what we need to know of the $1.3 billion value at risk charge. Roughly $850 million was attributable to AMC, according to what was stated during the value at risk period when we discussed Robin Hood. This indicates that one of the largest risk exposures for these brokers for the short sellers has been and will continue to be AMC. You can only image how much more risk there is for short sellers given that a broker alone has 23% of their value at stake. Recall that they require the funds to maintain these positions when there is a really hazardous stock. You can only image how much larger the risk is now given the amount of synthetics that have been created and the excessively leveraged holdings that they hold on AMC given that 850,023,000 of the value was at risk previously. As one might expect, Hedge funds are in financial difficulty and have less money to hold onto their short positions and even more money to develop new bets when their cash is removed. Additionally, given that they no longer have the funds or collateral to support it, it is evident that they are attempting to keep the AMC price low. Wales, for instance, purchased 1.4 million shares at a lower price after the market closed. It seems that your company is a troubled short hedge fund that is about to fail, hence we want the refund of our money, MFS. An identical amount of buy orders are placed on AMC shares, indicating that the public is not in favor of an increase in AMC's price. They have discussed a number of reasons for their reluctance to proceed, including the fact that 64% of the short AMC shares that are now on the market will lose more than $684. This is one of the main factors that increases the pressure to make covert purchases. Furthermore, as was already noted, it is clear why there is a constant attempt to manipulate the price of AMC given the high degree of risk and the possible financial loss at stake. They only turn a $684 profit, and they can't survive a market meltdown. They are certain that AMC's stock price should not go below $4 or $5 since doing so would place them in danger given the significant sum of money they need to maintain their profit margin on AMC and avoid a margin call. As a result, we discussed the potential for a short-term default, as they have a great deal of fear about the potential consequences and the risk of losing money. Furthermore, it's critical to recognize that AMC is a platform where the thoughts of the retail sector may be seen. I would love to share my thoughts and participate in a conversation right now. I would be interested in knowing your thoughts on the subject. As of right now, Wall Street B has purchased shares of AMC for $171,000 earlier today. The author raises a number of points which I would like to evaluate and offer my own analysis of. 
First, he always buys meme stocks, which usually fall 99% of their value after peaking and frequently rise suddenly for illogical reasons. It is thought that the market is showing signs of both bullish and bearish behavior, suggesting different results. Moreover, there are 500,000 members of the AMC subreddit alone, which is a sizable membership for a group devoted to researching the attention economics of that demographic. In the past, even when there were just 60,000 biased participants, I have seen instances of cryptocurrency manipulation that led to a notable increase in value. The market capitalization rose to an astounding $1 billion as a result. Then, when he goes on to discuss other topics, he mentions how failed companies frequently pump before going out of business. If that occurs, I will just sell after a pump. The point I want to make is that, although we should be happy to have new investors, we also need to realize that, in contrast to most people, this individual is in the business of making money. I do want to discuss one of his concerns, which is that he made a lot of noise about AMC's insolvency and said that it is just inconceivable for the company to file for bankruptcy this year. As a result, AMC has not discussed filing for bankruptcy. As a result, we should be careful to recognize that there are no discussions of bankruptcy in blogs like these. Furthermore, I concur that there are 500,000 individuals in the AMC subcredit for this stock alone. Although the premise is the same, the context is altered because he states that it is obvious that many people can now pump AMC. Although I don't want to use the term pump, I do want to emphasize that AMC's strong investor base shows that the company is well supported and has a strong basis. Unlike all the meme cryptos you will come across, AMC is a legitimate corporation with investors, customers, and as we have stated before, our support for the AMC community is based on longevity rather than short-term gain. That's the point I want to emphasize once more, and this article discusses how to always purchase MEM 99% down from highs. Never forget that AMC is incredibly cheap, but price suppression is the real cause not that people are selling. Having said that, as I've said before, I do advise people to join and invest in AMC. But there are some things that we really must comprehend. If you agree with what I wrote or with what this particular person said about AMC, please leave a comment below. As always, feel free to express your own opinions. We can also see how they're attempting to force a gam squeeze at this point, as well as the likelihood that one will happen. At $8.8 .8 million as of right now, AMC's total contract premium is at its highest point since February 27th. This suggests that AMC is actually seeing an increase in both the contract premium and, one again, just the contract volume. We've discussed the upcoming gamma squeeze for AMC, but Lou also mentioned that if AMC closes above $4 this Friday, there will be a gamma squeeze the following week. Although not confirmed, this is definitely Lewis's opinion. Please share your thoughts in the space provided for comments below. I should note, though, that there are other reasons why a gamma squeeze is likely to happen. First of all, as we have already covered, they are trying to intimidate AMC to persuade people to sell their stock. The value of AMC might easily rise by 100 to 200% in a gamma squeeze, which might persuade people to sell. Second, there's little doubt that the tactics employed by short sellers to force investors to sell their shares in order to acquire actual shares are a contributing factor in the gamma squeeze. They might possibly be doing this because they obviously want to make more synthetics. However, it's crucial to keep in mind that when we do see a gamma squeeze, it's because they're trying to get people to sell. We need to be certain that we can differentiate between a short squeeze and a gamma squeeze. I understand that, in contrast to a gamma squeeze, a short squeeze will result in the maximum value and return on investment. Financial advisors should always perform their own research and due diligence, but they should also make sure they comprehend the current circumstances and that, behind the gamma squeeze, it's possible that short sellers are attempting to sell in order to acquire actual shares. As always, thanks for watching, and please share your opinions in the comments below. I hope to see you all again soon.